Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna also think about the zeros um, because because I knew I had you two on and I want to talk about zero GTA options and what I would call the the square root time microscope um, and how as much as zero DTEs feel very different to how people are are used to trading in a in a theory sense they're really not they're just the same thing but zoomed in and sped up um, and in that sense it shouldn't be that 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 different and in even in one particular sense I think that the longer dated option markets are probably more changed by the zeros than the zeros are. It's um, fascinating. I know we can. So yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can make that make that a little bit more clear and explicit as we as we go. Um, but so you know, long ago, you only really had a couple of expirations in, in underlying. Right, you had your monthlies, you had your quarterlies. In yeah. the dark ages, that's when Jenny and I traded. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm used to having Tom and Tony, who I make fun of them for being old. Well, I, we started in the '90s. We were in the pits in the '90s. So right. back then, the, the we, '90s is fine. It was the it's, dark you know, ages. The it was. We yeah. accept the dark ages. Anyone be before eight? I to me, the dark ages of options markets was before '87. Okay, there you go. We're after uh, right? <laughs> before eighty-seven, before put skew, when when things were just sort of, oh, Black Scholes is probably exactly correct. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, people get more active. There's a lot more demand, and then the the weekly started getting good good activity, good liquidity, and now just every day we've got expirations that that have really good markets and really good trading. Um, and this this. You can do it every day. And so I want to get into today about sort of just how the theory treats these differently and, and why we would think they might come up. Um, and sort of in, in some sense, the zero DTEs ex exploding popularity shouldn't be a surprise. Um, and and we'll, we'll think about that uh, on the next slide, probably. All right, perfect. Yeah, rounding and scaling. So here we've got a, a picture. Um, so what's going on here is this is a, a, a simulated Brownian curve. And then we're just, and it's a GIF, so at some point it is looping. But the point is that as we <laughs> zoom in, it doesn't really look any different. Um, and there's there's a technical sense in which this, this is the case. Um, it's called Brownian scaling. And it says that if you shrink a Brownian motion, right? if I take a, a, like a big C, like a, a thousand, so I shrink it, I have a one over a thousand factor. I make all of my, my motions smaller and smaller. But... I speed it up. I make it run faster uh, by, by C squared. So if I shrunk it by a factor of a thousand, I'm speeding it up by a factor of a million. Okay. Um, but if I do that, there's no change. That has the exact same distribution as the initial Brownian motion, right? What it does specifically, because it's random, won't necessarily be the same, but the probabilities of it doing any particular thing are identical. Um, and so what this means, this is like a, the, the fractal self-similarity property. So as we zoom in, and then I have here just sort of a, a, a thought that if we were zooming in by instead of a 45-day trade, we're doing a one-day trade, that means you're zooming in by a factor of like 6.7. So right, that means that you bring in all your strikes by 6.7, you, you, you move your expected moves down by a factor of 6.7, and all of a sudden the model says that these 45 DTE trades and a, and a D, one DTE trade are no different. Right, the 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 Black Scholes model is going to come out with the same pricing. Right, you have to bring the strikes in and such, but there's no otherwise any differences between them. Um, and that this is not like particular to the Black Scholes model. Right, the Black Scholes model is the simplest and oldest of them, but there's not really a way to get away from Brownian motions because we have this memorylessness and symmetry, and those are the only things that will fit with the efficient market hypothesis. Right, the efficient market hypothesis says how you got here doesn't matter, only where you are, and the symmetry says you don't know if it's going up or it's going down, right? If you did, we wouldn't be doing math. <laughs> and between those two things, you get that it has to be Brownian motions at the, at the, at the base of whatever your model is. The, the underlying randomness has to come from Brownian motions. And because of that, it has to obey the scaling factors. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes when we were doing our longer dated options, we'd say we want to get out at 21 DTE or early or something, right? We, we want to avoid this end chaos that happens, right? The, the, the Greeks explode, everything is the sensitivities get big. And that's because in a lot of the formulas, there's a, a factor of one over the square root of the time until expiration. That's just like, it's a thing that crops up in the factors. In fact, the reason it crops up is this Brownian scaling reason. That's why the square root is there. Um, but so those continue to apply. And it's just that what the blow up means is different, right? If you were at a 45 day option and you thought that the blow up was happening 21 days into the trade, well, then if you're trading a one-day option, and those are your new standards, right? You've divided everything by your 6.7, everything's working out okay. 
Well, you're still going to get a blow up, but the blow up isn't now right when you started. The blow up is now, you know, three or four hours in, you know, noon, 1 p.m. Yeah. Um, right. And so we, we can really. And Jacob, translate. we say that we say that all the time in the middle of the SPX pit when we're looking at those options. You know, if you're supposed to manage it at 21 days, that's probably a couple hours in. If you just take the whole time scale and, and shrink it down instead of 45, yeah. you need to be out 50 percent of the way through the day. Exactly. Right. It's, yeah. The, the, the 6.71. Right. So it, it, there's a square root factor. So it's not quite 50 percent isn't isn't where you want to do it. It's like a square root of two. But but it, it's, it's very similar. And, and, you know, in a sense of the art of trading, you're not going to notice the difference. So if you're trying to do it scientifically, there will be a difference. But if so you're, what you know, time out, what time in your brain would be would be 21 days till expiration? Uh, so I've done a couple of studies on this, and I think that it, it's sort of one one thirty. It, okay. It's closer in. Yeah. yeah. Clear. Okay. Okay. Um, it's it's going to be closer third. in because of the square root um, factor. It takes a little bit longer to to to, to pull up its effect. Um, That's cool. But so in that sense, the the theories and the models are all the same, right? We can just because they're so much faster and so much more frequently, we get more off. We get more occurrences. And so if you're an active trader trying to you know thinking about your you know return on capital per day, well then the zeros make a lot of sense because. You just don't have to wait as long for anything, right? If you're if yeah. you're trying to make money over time, and you're able to structure your risk in a way that's acceptable to you, then the zeros are very popular, right? It makes sense that why you would want them because they yeah. give you the same thing but in less time. And now, yeah. with some of your studies, we'll see a, a very big negative. You know, if you no management, if you're if you don't manage it, if you don't close it early, if you're not closing it by that 21 day mark or even earlier, it's almost like the 18 day mark. Uh, you'll you'll see some big losses. Do you ever personally flip the cards and think if this is this is you know over time a loss, maybe I'll buy it instead of sell it? Maybe I don't like the right. They they wind up with a low win, right? You you do have these these big winners because right, but the, the those big losses are because of the occasional really like large move rather than the like serial failures. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, so you're I waiting mean, for that's like just one big move. You're gonna yeah. have loss, 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 and one big move will bring back your losses. So. Right, you'll have you'll and, have a big win to make up for all your losses. But to me, I don't know that that's a Emotionally, that's a much less pleasant way to like look at your account every day, where it's like that's down, 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 down. Oh, I hit a good one. Fine. Emotionally, <laughs> I like that. Emotionally, it's a bad way to look at it. Um, Jacob, real quick, only because I'm getting a lot of these uh, questions coming in from the chat. When you say 1:30, you're assuming our time zone. I'm assuming you're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I just want to clear that up. Okay. Yeah, New Yorkers and Californians can <laughs> can. <get jealous. laughs> to me, 1:30 almost night. seems like too late to leave these on. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I I don't know exactly when it is, but it, it's certainly somewhere between noon and one thirty. Might be pushing it. Well, and it's funny because when I do those, when I do the iron flies and the zero DTEs, I'm usually out between like twelve thirty and like one. That's usually yeah. when my GTC hits. Yeah. Perfect. But if you're doing the the twenty deltas, or you're out much quicker. If you're doing the twenty delta twenty dollar wide, you're out much quicker. You can be out in an hour, or two hours, depends on the depends on the day. Well, and the, and the wider you're willing to be, the faster it'll it'll come in too, right? Just because you're you're giving up less on your wings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So what are the differences, right? I've just said that you know, in a theoretical sense, there's no differences. The, the you 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 look at the initial state of the options, you can zoom in and you'll see the exact same paths, and it should work out the same. Um, so what is different? And actually, I think this is to me this was a like an ironic, uh, surprising result when I started thinking about it. But actually, the zero DTE options and the proliferation of, of more and more expirations changed the longer dated option markets more, right? It turned the zero DTE option markets into sped up, zoomed in versions of the old long dated option markets. But now the long dated option markets have a lot more flexibility in time rolling because, right, back when you only had a couple expirations, things worked by you put it on and then you had to wait until the expiration mm -hmm. hit, right? And there was nothing in yeah. between. Right. And zeros are sort of the same. Market opens, and there's not going to be an expiration until market closes. So you've got this same period of just the market's playing out, and you can adjust, you can manage, but nothing is expiring as we go. Um, yeah. Whereas when you trade a 45-day option, all of a sudden, if you want to roll it out two days, you can roll it out two days. If you want to roll it in a couple of days, you can roll it in a couple of days. You know, With your zeros, you can't roll in a couple hours. You can't roll out a couple hours. You can't say, I'd like to do a 1 p.m. expiration, please. <laughs> um, and so in that sense, the zeros... Are now the fast are now like a faster sped up version of what the old option markets were, 
and the and the longer day adoption markets are changed in that they're much more liquid in a time sense than they used to be. You you have a lot more flexibility in how you want to change your your adjustments there, um, which I think is a really neat effect, right? You, you, you take in some profits and rather than just closing it out and having to wait for the next expiration cycle, you can put on a fresh one, just a couple, you know, move it out a couple days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, can I have a question about individual products because you do the SPX zero DT studies mm -hmm. and they're wonderful and we have all these strategies now for the zero DTs, but we have a lot of people trading options on equities and those only have, and I say only, um, only have weeklies, but now, you know, now they have weekly. So they have the weekly expirations and we have a lot of viewers who like trading the weekly expirations on these equities and not going out as far, but, but trading, you know, weekly, weekly. Weekly, mm -hmm. weekly, and I'd be curious to know, you know, if if there could be any studies on if you're going to trade weekly, weekly, weekly. When is the best time to put them on? When is the best time to roll? Should you put them on the Friday before the week, or wait till Monday? Well, or, you know, what's idea. better with these weeklies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, that's a good idea, right? We have all these 45 monthly studies, and we have all these zero studies. We should, I, I should add in some weekly studies. You're right. That's a good mm -hmm. question. I don't know. Um, my guess would be that they are sort of, you know. Obviously, they'd be some sort of splitting the difference. You know, you mm -hmm. get your fa faster speed, more occurrences, but also you don't have to spend, you know, every ten minutes checking in on the checking in on your position. A nice idea. Um, the other problem is just, I mean, it's not a problem, but it's a. If you guys see see Dr. Data around the office, you should pester him because I want more underlyings in our zero DT data set. <laughs> Um, okay. We love pestering people. Yeah, I'll yeah, see you yeah. tomorrow. Well, you know, tomorrow. I'm long distance, so all I can do is type at him. Beth <laughs> <laughs> right. has moved us to takeaways so that you guys can get to, to the good time. So the explosion in available and liquid expirations for options contracts has drastically altered the market, both for the zero DTEs and our sort of traditional contracts. Um, and this is despite the fact that in the theory, because of Brownian scaling, there really shouldn't be hardly any change. It should just be zoomed in and sped up. But otherwise, like the, the probability of success, the, the profits, you know, the return on capitals, all these things should line almost exactly. Um, and you know, we've had years and years of studies and arguments and telling people that what they should really be doing to try to get up is have more occurrences that you can get your more consistently get these long-term results with less variation if you just do more independent trades. I didn't. I thought that the answer was we needed more underlyings, more un uncorrelated underlyings, you know, more foreign markets, that this was going to be how we were going to help people get this. But it turns out that the answer is we could just have zero DTE options every day, and now we've got occurrences all the time for people, which yes. is, is a really interesting uh, development, but it does require that you, like, keep pace. Um and we meet a lot of people on the road who, you know, they only trade SPX and they mm -hmm. like and to get in and out. And, and Liz and I talk about this, like you're out at the end of the day and you don't have overnight risk going into well, the next day. Well, it was funny, too, because even before the zero DTEs, we'd meet we'd meet people who would just wind up going just wind up in the SPX. And now we've got all the I feel like the SPX zero DTEs have exploded the market again. Yes. 